What's going on friends? If you don't use Harley Davidson's oil in your motorcycle, your engine will explode. Okay, well, maybe your engine won't exactly explode, but no matter what you own, every manufacturer's house brand oil is like super formulated for the exact engine that you have and just nothing else will do. Well, you and I know that's not true, but with knowing that's not true, so exactly what oil is it that you really want to use in your Harley Davidson engine. Okay, so naturally, Harley Davidson and every other manufacturer under the sun wants you to use their brand of oil, and of course they want to have that oil changed in their service departments. But that's not what we do. We don't want to use their oil, and we want to do our own work, so what kind of oil do we use in our Harley Davidson motorcycles? Now, I'm probably gonna start some huge fights over this because talking about oil and which one you should use, this is very dangerous territory. But before we get too far into today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, so the truth is any lubricant out there that is specified for a motorcycle that meets the requirements of your engine is going to be just fine for your motorcycle. As long as you change it, keep up with the maintenance on it, that engine lubricant is gonna work just fine in that engine and the motor is absolutely gonna last four years. Now, I say as long as it meets the requirements, this is where your best judgment comes in. You probably don't wanna buy the stuff in the white bottle with black letters that's very generic that says motorcycle oil, it meets the requirements, but it's like 50 cents a bottle. You probably don't wanna be putting that in your bike. So it's best to not completely cheap out and still go with a reputable brand. There's all kinds of name brand oils out there that are absolutely wonderful, from Schaefer's to Lucas to Mobile. Of course, we've got Motul, which is pretty expensive, Redline, you name it. There's all kinds of different oil brands out there. These are all excellent and there's plenty to choose from. Now, to say one of these is actually better than the other, this can really be splitting hairs. All of your name brand high quality lubricants, they're all pretty damn good. It really, I mean honestly, some of them may be better in certain areas depending on which test you're running on them. I mean, come on, we don't really have a way to thoroughly test them like a lab does. Best tests I've seen for a guy in his garage has been on Project Farm. Once again, I'm not Project Farm, but I am a subscriber of his channel. So guys, when it comes to choosing the right oil for your bike, I would honestly say the best way to do it really comes down to your budget and the availability of the product. What is the easiest way for you to get a quart of oil if you were to need a quart of oil for your bike? So guys, if you have a local shop that carries your brand of oil that you like to use, or if you're ordering that oil, how fast can you get it in? It's sometimes a day, the next day, a couple days, maybe a week. So those are some things to definitely think about when you're choosing which oil you're gonna run in your motorcycle. And the reason why I say how fast you can get them because having one in the garage, one is none and two is one, if that makes any sense. Because if you use the one, you have none. If you have two, you use the one, you still got one. Now engines can be really weird sometimes. Sometimes an engine will go 3,000 miles and not use a drop of oil, and then all of a sudden you check it, you're a half a quart low. That's why I say availability of being able to get the product is extremely important. Now, another thing to think about is, do you travel? Do you carry a quart of oil? Are you gonna use that quart of oil in your travels? Really, the only oil that you can pretty much guarantee is gonna be in stock just about at any dealership is, of course, gonna be the Harley-Davidson oil. So you decide on what brand of oil you want to use, then it comes down to, do you want to put conventional or synthetic in your motorcycle? This isn't quite as huge of a debate as it used to be in the past between conventional and synthetic, but just something to think about. We already know the benefits of synthetic oil, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. But what I am gonna bore you with is thinking about budget and how much you ride when it comes to using conventional or synthetic oil. Let's go with the Harley-Davidson oil change interval. You're supposed to change your oil every 5,000 miles on the later models. So if you're not exactly riding the full 5,000 miles in one year, because you are technically supposed to change your oil once a year, maybe you don't need to pop 
the extra money for that synthetic. Just run the conventional. If you're only running a couple thousand, three thousand miles a year, that way you're not throwing away your money on a high dollar oil that you're not really using to its full potential. Now for sure something that is hotly debated is the fluids that go into your engine, your transmission, and your primary. I know some guys are just staunchly against using engine oil in their transmission or their primary. Yes, there are dedicated fluids for your engine and transmission. It hurts absolutely nothing if you want to use a fully synthetic motor oil in your transmission and your primary. It meets the requirements of those gears within those systems. You're going to be just fine. Now, damn sure don't go put gear oil in your engine. That's, yeah, it's not backwards compatible like the motor oil is. So, the benefits of using the three-hole oil change with synthetic oil is you only got to buy one product. It really simplifies things, especially if you're traveling, just carry one bottle. I mean, technically, you shouldn't have a leak at your primary or your transmission. They, they shouldn't be burning any oil. If they are, something is seriously wrong. But... That is the benefit, it's just using one product. But if you absolutely insist on having a dedicated fluid, you can get dedicated fluids for the transmission and for the primary. And where I say it's okay to run the engine oil in there, think about the Sportsters, guys. You don't have an option there. Your transmission and your primary share fluid, so what's, got, what's good for the goose has gotta be good for the gander there. So guys, really when it comes to oil, it just comes down to preference. I wouldn't say there's an oil that's absolutely leaps and bounds better than another. I use AMS oil personally because that's my preference. I ran Harley Davidson 360 conventional, I've ran Screaming Eagle, I ran Mobile One, and I tried AMS oil and that's just where I've stayed because that's my personal preference. Some guys, they will run absolutely nothing but 15W40 diesel oil in their Harley Davidson engine. That's all they will run because that's what they believe in that's what they've used for years and hey guess what there ain't nothing wrong with that some guys prefer to use automatic transmission fluid in their primary and in their transmission I've seen it before not my thing but it works and they do it I don't recommend it I recommend if nothing else just kind of sticking with what's recommended by the book yeah at the end of the day it just comes down to your personal preference on what you want to run like I say, I always, you know, talk about the benefits of AMS oil, but, you know, I put AMS oil in bikes, and it actually made them noisier. And ended up going back to Screaming Eagle, or going to Redline, or, you know, just whatever. Even Castor oil. Any of these manufacturers make a wonderful oil. So, guys, don't let anybody tell you, oh, you don't want to use that, it's junk. They're all pretty damn good lubricants. Just comes down to what your budget and your availability is. But yeah, guys, if you have any questions about oil, what you're wanting to run on your bike, please hit it up in the comments below. But I hope this gave you a good general outline to just use your best judgment and just buy what you can afford and what's available for you to get. But yeah, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.